In this video, the easiest ways to play D&D or other tabletop RPGs online. Hi everyone, my name is Nate and you are watching WASD20, a channel about tabletop RPGs and fantasy maps. If you're like me, this whole pandemic thing has really thrown a wrench in your face-to-face D&D games, and you may have been fumbling around with various tools that will enable you to carry on gaming with your friends. In this video, I'll talk about a pretty wide selection of tools, but I want to focus on what's simple and easy. So to start with, I'll be covering some really bare bones options and easy hacks that could enable you to play D&D online with your friends tonight for free with very little setup or learning curve. Toward the end of the video, I will mention some of the more fully featured and complex virtual tabletops, and those are probably worth looking into as well. However, I've recently seen a lot of videos and articles featuring lots of those, so I want to focus on some simpler options that I think a lot of people overlook. Before we get into these tools, this video is patron-fueled. If you find value in these videos and you want to support my work, becoming a patron is the best way to do that. There are some pretty cool rewards too, like weekly live streams with me and a bunch of other stuff. So go check it all out over at patreon.com slash WASD20. All right, so playing D&D online, where do you start? First, you'll need a way to talk with your group. The main options that I know of are Zoom, Discord, Skype, or Google Meet or Hangouts. And I'm not really sure what the status of the Google thing is right now. It seems like Hangouts is still there, but Meet is now there too, and it's, it's kind of confusing. I think they need to get it together. Either way, I have tried Google Meet recently, and I found it to be pretty awful, actually, uh, compared to what I have been using, which is Zoom. I have found it to be by far the least glitchy and have the best call quality, uh, but the free version has a 40 minute time limit on meetings with three or more people, which is not great for a game of D&D. So for a while I paid $15 a month for the pro version of Zoom and I really did find it worth it. However, if you're looking for something free, I've had pretty good luck with Discord video chat and you might try Skype or Google too, and you might find them actually totally fine for you. I personally do recommend video because seeing your friends makes a difference. Body language or facial expression are valuable forms of communication, and I'm also convinced it's just good for the soul to see human beings, especially when we haven't seen them face to face in a long time. As someone who spent the last two months teaching high school students via Zoom, let me just tell you that teaching to a room full of muted cameras was miserable, and seeing my students' faces made it vastly better. All right, now that we've talked about ways to connect, what else do you need? And the answer is nothing. Wait, you want maps and tokens and online character sheets and dice rolling? Okay, there's nothing wrong with those things, but seriously, there is a beautiful purity to a group of friends just each having their own dice and character sheets on their table or desk and just playing theater of the mind. No maps, no tokens or minis, just communicating and using your imagination. Now, for some people, this is heresy, but theater of the mind play is actually really common. Even many of us who do play with battle mats or some terrain at the table do some things without that stuff. And I actually played an entire campaign this way. Some of you might remember it. If you've been around a while, you might remember the original Provokers campaign on my friend Matt's channel, A Fistful of Dice. No maps, and it worked great. Now, as someone who started playing with maps and minis, at first it was a bit tricky for me, and I kept asking how far away the enemy was because I wanted to know if I had enough movement to get in melee range or whatever the situation warranted. But then I realized I should just stop asking. Just tell the DM what you want to do, and if it's too far, they'll tell you. It does tend to lead to a bit more narrative style of play and can be a little less tactical, but I still love the pure simplicity of it. If you're not used to this, I think it will be hard at first, but try it for a few sessions and you might actually find some benefits. This might actually be the right time to stretch yourself and try a new style of play. It's also possible to quickly screen share images that can give a visual reference. This could be a map or it could be a landscape or a character portrait for an NPC or something like that. 
So if I have time in my game prep, I often do like to get some images in a folder ready to screen share. Now, while I often play theater of the mind for online play, I have started to use maps in a lot of my games for the dungeon-like locations. So let's say you do want to use a map, but you still want to be able to easily pop into a game tonight with pretty much no learning curve. One really easy solution that I've used in games with friends in the past is pasting a map like this awesome one from Two Minute Tabletop into a Google drawing, or you can do similar things in Google Slides. These are totally free web applications. Just go to drawings.google.com and you can just load a map and share it with your players. And if you put tokens in there and give your players editing rights when you share it with them, they can actually move their tokens around. It's a good idea to have a folder handy with tokens or new maps so that you can easily drag and drop them in during your session. This method also doesn't require any screen sharing as each player can just have the map up in their own browser on their own tablet or computer. Now let's talk about how you can actually get tokens and encounter maps. If you just go to Google and type in orc token and do an image search, you'll find tons of options. There's also this really cool token stamp editor from Roll Advantage, and uh, I'm going to put a link to that down in the video description. And this one enables you to quickly put in almost any image you can find and make a nice little round token out of it. You can adjust the border size and things like that. Another one I'm a really big fan of is this kind of newish one from Two Minute Tabletop. Um, it's just really cool. It's got a number of different uh, shapes and then you can go in and you can make them your own custom colors. There are a number of other great creators making tokens and most of them have Patreon accounts where you can get access to some freebies but can also pay to get more. One of my personal favorites is Printable Heroes but if you have other suggestions please leave them in the comments down below. For maps, once again, there are a number of great Patreon creators, including Two Minute Tabletop, who give some of their maps away for free, and you can get more if you become a patron. You can also find some pretty nice maps on our D&D maps on Reddit, and uh, there are a number of other sources, even like Pinterest and things like that, where you can find free encounter maps. To create your own maps, there are also a number of good applications. Dungeon Painter Studio is one that I hear great things about, and they do have a free version with some limited options, but the full version is only $15 on Steam. MapForge is another one I played around with a little bit, and although I really like the way it looks, buying some of the bigger asset packs to kind of expand your options can get really expensive. Dungeon Draft is a newer one that has a really nice hand-drawn feel, but personally, I have yet to try it. And then there's Dungeon Fog. Now, full disclosure, they are one of my sponsors, but this is not a sponsored video. And I just want to say it's a really solid service that I actually use. Dungeon Fog has a free version with the option to become a subscriber to unlock a lot more stuff. Now, I used to be one of those people who complained about subscription models, but it really gives companies an incentive to keep improving their service. And Dungeon Fog has been adding a lot of great stuff with even more in the works. It can do fantasy, modern, sci-fi maps, pretty much anything you want. I did a full video on Dungeon Fog a while back, and I'll put a link to that one right up there so you can check it out. So all of the above is pretty easy and can get you gaming online with your friends, but a lot of people may find the extra work of learning an actual virtual tabletop worth their time. If you're making maps on Dungeon Fog, it actually does have a GM mode built in that I've found really handy because it allows you to run games with the maps you just created or grabbed from their huge user collection, which you can search or browse. The main benefit of the GM mode over something like the Google Drawings method, which I just mentioned, is that you have fog of war features. So players can't see areas that they haven't explored yet. And you can place hidden objects and secret areas that won't show up on the player version until you reveal it. So Dungeon Fog is a really good step up from that Google Drawings method because it gets you these very valuable features while still having less setup than fully featured virtual tabletops. For example, if you want to get your players in the game, you actually just share a link with them and then they can join with that link. It just kind of opens up a new tab in their browser. No need to log in, no need to download anything. Now, personally, I've also used Photoshop to kind of paint on a fog of war. And I know a lot of people do this. Uh, you just put a layer of black all over your map and then slowly erase what the players discover. 
However, I found myself having to be really careful and taking a lot of time trying not to erase too much and then eventually erasing too much and revealing a hidden passage that players hadn't discovered yet. If you have any other ideas or quick hacks to get playing D&D online short of virtual tabletops, I would love to hear your thoughts down below. But I also do want to at least mention some of the fully featured virtual tabletops I've heard about, and because I have very little experience with many of them, I'll keep my comments pretty brief. So if you are really wanting a system that will manage character sheets, manage dice rolls, track combat, and take away some of the legwork, a system that allows you to purchase rule books and modules and easily use them in your virtual tabletop, most of the following can help you do this and probably a lot more that I don't even know of. The two big dogs with the most market share here seem to be Roll20 and Fantasy Grounds. Roll20 is extremely popular because it has a free version that would allow you to jump in and run a game with no financial investment. I've actually used this one a little bit, and I've found it fairly intuitive, and I've actually been thinking about getting back into it. However, Fantasy Grounds is also tempting. I have a few friends who swear by it, and it is certainly very feature-rich. It also has an updated version called Fantasy Grounds Unity that is currently in beta, and it looks really promising. Fantasy Grounds is a paid piece of software, so the GM would need to pay and then players could play for free. But it gets really great reviews and I'm definitely seriously considering it. If you have any input on the Roll20 versus Fantasy Grounds debate, I would love to hear your thoughts on that below because eventually I might need to make a decision. Now, there are some other options I don't know too much about. Arkin Forge was a really cool one I saw at Gen Con last year that had these incredibly realistic and dynamic maps with weather and time of day and all this stuff. They looked amazing. I've also heard of people liking D20 Pro, uh, Astral Tabletop. Tabletop Simulator is another cool one that actually simulates physics and makes you feel like you're at an actual tabletop. Like it says, uh, there's a huge variety of games you can play with it and uh, it looks especially cool if you have a VR headset. I actually bought it when it was on sale and I just haven't got a chance to use it yet. So while the focus for this video is on the quick and the easy, I know a lot of people will find that time investment required to learn these virtual tabletops worth it. If you're gonna be running a lot of online games in the future and you really want a feature rich one-stop shop. It's also worth mentioning that there are some great online tools for managing your campaign outside of the gameplay part too. I know a lot of people use Evernote or Google Docs, but personally, I'm starting to move all my stuff from Google Docs over to World Anvil to house my world and campaign information. And there's even some cool tools for players too. So World Anvil is definitely worth checking out. So as you can clearly see, this is definitely not an exhaustive list of all the options for online play and all the things you might wanna consider, but hopefully I've given you some good ideas and I would love to hear your ideas too. Are there valuable tools that enable you to run games online? What have you used and what would you recommend for others? Thanks so much for joining me for this one, everybody. And thank you most of all to the WASD20 patrons. These amazing people make monthly pledges to support my work and I am very grateful for them. So go check it out once again over at patreon.com slash WASD20. Thanks again. Take care, everybody. You'll see me again very soon.